Hello everyone, welcome back to what is the final initial piece of my look at Disney Infinity for Star Wars fans. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler, and my goal, again, is to try to give Star Wars fans a look at what Disney Infinity is, what it entails as far as products to buy, items that are available, uh, collections to have, compatibility between versions, and so on and so on, so that a Star Wars fan who might be on the fence considering maybe picking up Disney Infinity 3.0 with Star Wars scenarios in it, um, maybe I can help that person on the fence make that decision a little bit more easily, or at least in a more informed fashion. We've already looked at what the game is, what the physical components are, what compatibility issues exist between different platforms, different versions of the game, and so forth, and just kind of took a general overview using examples of products that are already out there. This episode, we're going to take a quick look at what is about to be available. I'm recording this at the beginning of August 2015, and later this month, on August 30th, Disney Infinity 3.0 will launch. It will bring with it Star Wars characters and other Star Wars content. The question is, what will there be, what will it cost, and what are some options of how to pick those up? That we want to address in this final initial episode. After this episode, you will see more episodes in this playlist, as new products are released for Disney Infinity Star Wars line, as I take a look at them as reviews, very much like I do with, say, the X-Wing or Edge of the Empire stuff from Fantasy Flight Games. But for our initial, you know, info dump to help people make that big decision of whether or not to purchase the game and get into it, well, this, it's the last essential piece. So first off, there will be a starter set for Disney Infinity 3.0. Unlike back with the previous version, 2.0, it's not going to be a Star Wars starter set like there was a Marvel one then and a Disney Originals one because that confused the crap out of people, having one that had Avengers in it and the other that had Merida and Stitch in it. That confused people. People were buying two starter sets, getting two identical copies of the game, two bases when they didn't need it because they didn't realize that you could get one starter and just buy figures separately. So that is gone. There's only one starter set type. It's Star Wars. However, again, just like with the Marvel stuff back in 2.0, there are two different levels of starter sets that you can get. There's also a way to break down the starter set's contents so that you don't necessarily have to buy a starter set if you already have your own Infinity Base from a previously existing system or game that is compatible with the one that you've got. See our episode on compatibility about that. So what are your options for starter sets? The first starter set is 65 bucks. It's coming out for Wii U, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. Yes, there are digital releases of a digital-only version of the game that'll be available for PC for free, for iPad, and for Android, just like they have been in the past except for Android, that uses digital-only purchases and web code cards to get access to the characters for those. In those cases, see when I talked about the different versions of the game and the history of the game in the past. We're talking physical products this time around, okay? Now, in that physical starter set, you're going to get a copy of the game for whatever system you're buying it for, so make sure you buy it for the system that you want, obviously. You will get a Disney Infinity base, which, again, is pretty much the exact same base you've gotten before if you bought a copy of the game for that particular system. You will also then get two figures and a playset piece with a web code card the equivalent of getting one of those playset packs that you might buy individually for 40 bucks or so. In this case, it is the Twilight of the Republic playset pack that's included. So you get a figure of Anakin Skywalker from the Clone Wars, a Sokotano from the Clone Wars, and a playset piece that gives you access to the Twilight of the Republic playset in the game meaning you now have access to the prequel era in which to play different story-based missions, challenges, and whatnot. It gives you access to that era or that universe to play in. It's the universe that Anakin and Ahsoka's figures are native to, so they automatically are available in that to begin with. Okay. You also, of course, get a web code card like you do with the other editions where on the back, There'll be a code if you want to enter that code into your web or digital-only version of the game to unlock those same characters so you're not buying them again inside the digital game if you happen to be playing that. Now, that initial starter set, like I said, is $65. That's pretty much par for the course for Disney Infinity. 
If by chance you don't want to rebuy the base, maybe you're playing on PS4 and like me, you already own it with the 2.0 set for the PS4. Why should I buy a second base? Okay. In the U.S., you can do a digital purchase for 30 bucks of just the 3.0 game. Okay, It's digital only in the U.S. In the U.K., you can buy a disc-based version, but in the U.S., it'll be digital only this time. Forgo picking up a starter set entirely, since now you've got the game and you don't need the base, and you can buy the Twilight of the Republic playset for 40 bucks separately. That'll give you Anakin, Ahsoka, the playset piece, and the webcode card. So everything that's available in that starter set, in theory... You could buy elsewhere as long as you've already got a compatible base. I've actually seen that playset pack go for 30 instead of 40 on some retailers, so it might make it somewhat financially viable to buy the digital version and just the playset if you've already got a base, but it's only going to help you by about 5 bucks at most. So in a lot of cases, I would actually recommend just buying the starter set, getting a spare base in case one of them dies or you want to play on a different system. Now... If you're playing on Xbox 360, Xbox One, or Wii U, that's the only option you've got as far as starter sets go. You can either break it up or you can buy the actual starter set, but that's it. Whereas if you play for a Sony system, they've made a deal to give them a timed exclusive that gives you another option. If you're playing on PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 4, you can buy the so-called starter set Saga Bundle. You get the exact same stuff that's in the regular starter set. So the game, the Infinity Base, Anakin, Ahsoka, the Twilight of the Republic playset piece, and the webcode card. Exactly the same stuff. But you also get the Rise Against the Empire playset pack, which is the Rise Against the Empire playset piece, the only other one so far that they've announced. There's a the Force Awakens one coming soon, but they haven't given us the name of it yet. Plus the two figures that come with it, which is Luke Skywalker and Leia Organa as seen in A New Hope and a separate Boba Fett figure. Uh, the Boba Fett figure will come with its own web code card to unlock it in the digital-only game, and the playset pack for Rise Against the Empire, right? Luke, Leia, and the playset piece will get their own web code card to also make them available in the digital-only version of the game. That pack's costing about 120 bucks. So, for a little less than twice the price of a starter pack, you get three more figures... Two more webcode cards to unlock them, plus one more playset piece, which gives you the original trilogy era in which to play. And you get all of those early, because about a month, a little less than a month and a half later, on October 2nd, when Wave 2 comes out, that's when they're going to release Rise Against the Empire with Luke, Leia, and the playset piece and their little webcode card separately for purchase. And that's when they're going to release, presumably, Boba Fett separately for purchase with his little web code card. But if you want to get them early, only way you can do that is on a Sony system, and the only way to do it is in the Saga Bundle. So if you really want to get everything on day one, pick up the Saga Bundle, but you got to be playing on PlayStation 3 or 4. Those eventual prices, by the way, of Rise Against the Empire with Luke Leia, the playset piece, and the web code card, probably going to be about 30 to 40 bucks. And for Boba Fett by himself with his little web code card, you're probably looking at about 15, give or take. You know, kind of the standard prices we've seen since really 1.0, but especially since 2.0. Now, since the only one of the playset pieces that is available across the board at launch is Twilight of the Republic, the prequel era one, it's probably not a big surprise that everything else being released at launch is prequel oriented. At least in mainstream, available everywhere distribution. Okay? They're also releasing Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Clone Wars as a standalone figure, and Yoda from the Clone Wars also as a standalone figure. They will, of course, come with their webcode cards and retail for about 15 bucks. You'll be able to find them wherever you can find Disney Infinity figures. They're not exclusive to anywhere. You can also spend 10 bucks and buy a Power Disc pack, but unlike those old blind packs for 2.0 and 1.0, in this case, you get four power discs, and you know exactly what they are for each one. They are shown in the box. You get the same ones every time you buy it. There is no randomness added into the mix this time around. In this case, the power disc pack includes a General Grievous' wheel bike as a vehicle. It includes the Star Wars team-up Mace Windu, which makes him jump in at times to help you fight. And it comes with what appear to be terrain and sky 
adapters for the toy box, uh, uh, texture changers for Felucia. That's forests of Felucia for the terrain and sky over Felucia for the, the sky texture or sky look, if you want to call it that. So you've got four. They're being sold in one package. They call it the Twilight of the Republic Power Disc Pack, again, for 10 bucks. It's about the same price as buying four power discs for any of the previous sets, only you'd have to buy two $5 blind packs and wouldn't know what you're getting. So this is a nice change. Eventually, when we get to probably Wave 2 and get Rise Against the Empire really taking center stage and the original trilogy era taking center stage, we'll get another power disc pack for about 10 bucks again. It's going to include Princess Leia's bush disguise, so a, a costume change. Luke's Rebel Alliance flight suit, another costume change, along with the uh, Y-Wing Starfighter as a ship, and Slave One as a ship. Now, I should note here, as far as figures go, that if you're looking for prequel-era figures, they will eventually be releasing Darth Maul as another one that's native to Twilight of the Republic, but there's been no announcement of when yet. And then, of course, in October, when Wave 2 is taking center stage, not only will you be able to get the Rise Against the Empire playset set as a pack, right, Luke, Leia, the playset piece and the little web code card and everything. That's when you'll also be able to get Boba Fett separately and when you'll be able to finally get Han, Chewie, and Darth Vader as separate individual character purchases. The only Star Wars character that's kind of up in the air right now where we haven't seen a release date announced yet is Darth Maul. Now, you may be saying, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. That's prequel characters. That's original trilogy characters. I know I saw something about Rebels characters being in Disney Infinity. What about them? Yes. Yes, they are coming. Yes, they're part of the launch set, Wave 1, but in kind of an odd way. Remember that characters are native to a particular play set, usually, or they're only native to the toy box. What that means is that regularly, you can play only a certain characters in a play set. So for Twilight of the Republic, if I want to play in the prequel era, the characters I'll be able to play immediately just by sitting them on the base are Anakin, Ahsoka, Obi-Wan, Yoda, and eventually Darth Maul. If I want to play in the original trilogy era with Rise Against the Empire, that playset, the native characters are going to be Luke, Leia, Boba Fett, Darth Vader, Han Solo, and Chewbacca. When the ones that aren't out yet eventually come out and when they are available standalone-wise if you don't have a Sony system, of course. But the Rebels figures are kind of like Elsa that I showed you from Disney Infinity 1.0. They are not native to any particular set. They're essentially toy box natives. Meaning if I try on the first day that the game comes out to play as Kanan Jarrus in the prequel era in Twilight of the Republic, it's not going to work. If I want to play as Ezra Bridger in the original trilogy era with Rise Against the Empire on day one, if I bought that saga bundle, I stick it on there, it's not going to work. Okay? All of the Star Wars characters, Rebels included though, are crossover characters. There'll be one coin, in 2.0 it was 10, now it's just one, one crossover coin to find in the game. And once you find Kanan's coin, you'll be able to play as Kanan in that playset. Or if I find uh, the Darth Vader coin in Twilight of the Republic, I'll be able to play as Vader in Twilight of the Republic instead of just in Rise Against the Empire. But you got to find the coins for the ones that aren't natives. And the Rebels figures are not native to either of them, based on what's being shown on the Disney Infinity website right now. So understand that they are crossover characters only. You must unlock them in the play sets to play as them. They won't be playing from the start, or you can play with them, as with any figures, in the toy box. All right, that being said, there are four Rebels characters being released, so not the entire crew, no Hera and no Chopper this time. And these figures are all exclusives to different retailers. So not only are there some that are only going to be able to be found in one place, that one place isn't the same for all of them. Finding the Rebels figures is really the pain in the ass of Disney Infinity 3.0. Here's where to find them all. Kanan Jarrus, you can find as an exclusive to Walmart. Ezra Bridger is going to be an exclusive to Toys R Us. Garazeb Zeb Aurelios is an exclusive to GameStop. And Sabine Wren is an exclusive to Target. Now, these are timed exclusives, but we do not know yet how long they're only going to be available at those retailers as opposed to elsewhere. I would suggest, honestly, if you want to play with the Rebels characters, don't mess around. Just go online, put in some pre-orders through those locations, 
and get them delivered to you. That way you're not running around from store to store to store, and you're definitely going to be able to get your hands on them if there is ever a rush on the exclusive or if there's a limited quantity of the exclusives that are out there. So again, at launch, $65 starter set with the game, the base, the playset piece for Twilight of the Republic, Anakin, Ahsoka, and the webcode card to use them all digitally, $65. Or... On Sony Systems, the Saga Bundle. Again, the game, the base, Anakin Ahsoka and the Twilight of the Republic playset piece with their webcode card, but also Luke, Leia, and the Rise Against the Empire playset piece with a web card for that, plus Boba Fett with his webcode card. $120. Or, you could split those up, wait on Rise Against the Empire until Wave 2 comes out in October, wait on Boba Fett, until later with Wave 2 coming out in October. Buy the digital copy of the game for 30. Use a previously existing, previously owned compatible Infinity Base instead of buying a new one. And then buy Twilight of the Republic as a playset pack, which is Anakin Ahsoka, the playset piece, and the webcode card for about 30 in most retailers' cases right now. And then on the side... You have an individual release of Obi-Wan for about 15, Yoda for about 15, and the Twilight of the Republic power discs for 10, a set of four of them. And then for about 15 each, you have the exclusives of Kanan Jarrus from Rebels at Walmart, Ezra Bridger from Rebels at Toys R Us, Sabine Wren from Rebels at Target, and Zeb Aurelios from Rebels at GameStop. You will eventually, with Wave 2, be able to pick up the Rise Against the Empire set with Luke, Leia, and the playset piece by itself. Boba Fett by himself. You'll be able to get Han and Chewie and Darth Vader for Rise Against the Empire. You'll also be able to get a Rise Against the Empire power disc pack of another set group of four power discs. At the moment, the only thing unknown for Star Wars items from the prequel and original trilogy era is Darth Maul, who does not have a release date. There will eventually be another playset Based on The Force Awakens with plenty of other characters, none of that has been announced beyond the general concept yet, however. Also, I should note here there are plenty of Marvel and other Disney original figures coming out for Disney Infinity 3.0, including characters like Korra and Sam Flynn from Tron, who are toy box characters, Olaf from Frozen, also a toy box character, uh, characters from Inside Out who actually come with their own playset. And we'll eventually be seeing new Marvel characters in the form of Hulkbuster, Iron Man, and Ultron. So it's not just Star Wars this time, but the majority of it is focusing on Star Wars at this point, and all but one of the play sets are focusing on Star Wars at this point. It's definitely a Star Wars-heavy version of Disney Infinity for 3.0. Hopefully this series so far hasn't confused the crap out of you. Hopefully it's helped to illuminate some things, delineate some things, and make it clear what is available, what's compatible, and give you a sense of whether or not this is something you might want to jump into, because there is a lot of collecting involved with playing Disney Infinity, whether it's 1.0, 2.0, or 3.0. But if you're a Star Wars fan, I think that 3.0 is going to be worth your time. Not necessarily as a collector, though it may be. You may want to collect the figures themselves. But seeing new stories that you can play, particularly on next-gen systems right now, that's a cool thing for Star Wars fans to finally get. It's been a while since we got a solid Star Wars console game. Though, of course, only a short time later, we're going to get Star Wars Battlefront for the next-gen systems and PC only. So, maybe this will just be something to bide your time a little bit, to uh, take care of a little bit of that Star Wars video game of hunger before Battlefront comes out. Either way, though, I think this will be a pretty good one to check out. I certainly will be myself. With that, we'll wrap up this episode. Be sure to keep track of this playlist in the future, though, as I will be releasing reviews as products are released. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped, and may the Force be with the Disney Infinity players.